Dear learners, I welcome you all to the session on Postgraduate Certificate in Climate Change. I am Dr. V. Venkatramanan, Faculty, School of Interdisciplinary and Transdisciplinary Studies. In this session, I will be discussing about the broad objectives of this particular program, Postgraduate Certificate in Climate Change. Thereafter, I will be discussing with you all the courses and the job opportunities and the way how you will be going through this particular program and what you will be getting after completing this particular program. So, friends, you know how climate is changing. Climate change, it is a disaster, it is brewing. We will see how and the ways, the means, the signs of climate change and how we will be adapting ourselves, how, what kind of attitudinal change is required through this particular program. Since industrialization, we know that the Earth's climate, the, uh, it has changed and to an extent of 1 degree centigrade, the average global temperature has increased. And now in this century, trust me, the temperature is going to increase by 4.5 degree centigrade if we continue as business as usual approach. In, in that sense, that if our economic development, if economic activity, industrial uh, activity, urbanization, if it continues like this, the way it is, then definitely by the end of this century, we can expect the global average temperature to be 4.5 degrees centigrade, which will be dreadful. When I say dreadful, because this climate change is going to affect every possible system on the Earth's surface. In fact, no organism can escape from this climate change. So in that context, this program is very important. Further, if you look at it, the last decade or in this present decade, many developments have taken place at the global level, at, at the international level also, and also at the national level. The four most important thing is the, the treaty, that is in, in the year 2015, uh, global community, I mean, a community of nations uh, came together and they signed the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. This Paris Agreement on Climate Change, it's a watershed. When I say it's a watershed, because it is giving us a kind of how we'll be approaching the future, what kind of legacy we are going to give to the future generation, and what are the steps we need to take into account. And in that Paris Agreement uh, on Climate Change, what we are basic objective is we, all the nations, the, the countries, the people, we have to thrive hard to reduce the increase in temperature by 2 degrees centigrade. And we will take all the measures possible to keep the temperature increase by 1.5 degrees centigrade. This is the most important thing, how we will be achieving it. And this will be possible by capacity building. And this will be possible by climate literacy. And in that regard, every national government, they are having their own policy, climate policy. And in that climate policy, the capacity building in the field of climate change is important. And in that perspective, or from, from that perspective, this particular program, Postgraduate Certificate in Climate Change is important. So let us see what you'll be getting it from this particular program. When you see the most important thing is climate literacy, the capacity building is important. The basic thing is that uh, the, the learners, the people must be sensitized towards the changing climate. The science of climate change, also the ways how it is going to affect uh, uh, every system possible on the Earth's surface, and how what are the measures we need to take into account as far as mitigation and uh, adaptation. So, in a broad outline, if you look at it, the program objective of this particular program is to expose the learners to the nuances of climate change. When I say nuances of climate change, we need to understand that why there is a clim uh, climate is changing. In fact, it is, uh, when you see, since the evolution of Earth, uh, origin of Earth, 4.5 billion years back, the Earth's climate is, you know, it's not constant, it's not stagnant, it is always changing. So, it is sta changing, it's not stable, but now the increase in temperature, if you look at it, is it is increasing very much faster. And that increases because of what? whether it is because of the natural reasons or because of the human beings. And that is the key thing we need to understand from this particular program. Because now it is clear, scientifically proved, that human beings are responsible for causing climate change. 
So to start with the science of climate change means I am talking about the anthropogenically induced climate change. So the learners will be exposed to the you know in what ways the human action are responsible for causing changing in that uh, in the climate through a lot of you know gases, greenhouse gases and a lot of things that have been emitted into the atmosphere. So these things will be first taught to you so that you can understand yes it is changing and what are the reasons for it. So when you see there is a lot of causes definitely human beings because through economic activity particularly since the industrial revolution the, the kind of economic activity, the kind of rapidity, the kind of you know changes they are causing on the earth's surface, the landscape it is so you know tangible. So that kind of uh, thing is causing a lot of harm to the environment and the most important thing is the climate change because this uh, thing. Uh, since the effect if you look at the consequences of climate change or in other words the impacts of climate change I repeatedly said that there is a possibility of um, a collapse of the civilization as well. So when I say collapse of the civilization because we are dependent on the ecosystem, we are dependent on the ecosystem services and functions. If that ecosystem services and functions if it is affected because of climate change the integrity if it is affected, it is destabilized, what kind of impact it can have on human beings, what kind of impact it can have on the organisms, the ocean ecosystem, the soil ecosystem, so it is tremendous, it's, it will be uh, very difficult to manage. So in that regard, impacts of climate change is very important thing, that has been very well factored in this particular program, that is impacts of climate change where it will be discussing in uh, different sectors, the primary sectors, the natural resources the urban system, the livelihood and uh, you know a lot of resources which is very very important thing that is uh, which we are it's most important the simple reason is that it is providing a lot of functions and services to us. Yes it is important that is biodiversity, biological diversity because uh, I must st state uh, categorically that we are in the era of uh, climate change, yes. Second important thing is that we are in the era of sixth mass extinction. You know the species we are losing at a very rapid rate. And that definitely there are many reasons for that and one important reason is the climate change. So that will, we also will be uh, definitely will be discussing uh, in this particular program. Thereafter, they see not only the, uh, the science of climate change, not only the impacts, we need to understand the ways to mitigate, we need to understand the you know how we will be adapting ourselves. Because in this sense the mitigation and adaptation is very significant. When I say mitigation because we need to take the measures possible as much as possible so, so that the greenhouse gas emissions will be curtailed, will be reduced, that, that's a possible thing we can do it. But at the same time we need to understand that not only mitigation, we need to take into account the adaptation measures also. So that also is very well factored in this particular program. The, then a very interesting point is that yes I am talking uh, for, for past 5 minutes I am talking about the climate change and it is changing and uh, without doubt when I just talked about the scientific proof as well. But the learners must understand how to assess it, how they themselves can understand yes there is a change in climate and that is possible uh, in this particular program because the learners will be capacitated in the field of climate assessment tools wherein we will be discussing about different tools particularly the remote sensing, the model, uh, the crop models and so on and so forth. The, the last objective is very interesting, when I say interesting because we need to understand that what kind of intersection, what kind of interaction the climate is having with the society, what kind of interaction I mean see, I mean to say that there is definitely a forward and backward linkages that is existing between climate and uh, society. So that is uh, very well factored in, the, in this particular program and uh, natural, this is in fact uh, this particular program postgraduate certificate in climate change, it is very comprehensive, comprehensive means by the end of 6 months that is uh, the minimum duration for this particular program, uh, the learners will be highly capacitated with, with all the possible uh, you know uh, knowledge requirements, the demand requirements of uh, climate change will be definitely met in this particular program. So now uh, let us see uh, what, what exactly the you know the learners if they wanted to enroll in this particular program, what kind of the criteria, what kind of the eligibility requirements they need to have. The first and foremost important thing is that this particular program is open to any graduate, any graduate from any discipline they are eligible for this uh, particular program and um, when you see uh, 
uh, next important thing is that this, uh, whatever the objectives I have uh, talked about, it has been uh, very well uh, compartmentalized into different courses. There are three important courses that is called the, the, uh, the pr prime or uh, core courses, they are called as compulsory courses, three courses are there. And thereafter you have two optional courses and uh, the learners are free to choose any one of the optional courses. So in total there are four courses, the learners must complete these four courses to get uh, successful uh, the degree from this particular program, postgraduate certificate in climate change. So, uh, when you look at it, uh, the, the minimum uh, duration for this pro program is six months, the maximum is two years. Uh, as far as the opportunities are concerned, yes, in addition to climate literacy, in addition to the demand of the changing times, uh, you will be capacitated in the field of climate change that can be very helpful to pursue a career in academics uh, and you can even uh, look for the job in the uh, as a consultant definitely it's very important thing because everything if you see uh, directly or indirectly related with climate change and the last one is that in a lot of organizations environmental agencies are there and uh, wherein there's a lot of demand uh, for climate change you can see for yourself that every day there are the kind of disasters, the kind of you know impacts that you can see for yourself. So in that sense, this particular program is very, very important. So I just talked about the courses. There are uh, the five courses are there. Uh, the three compulsory courses are, the first one is the introduction to climate change. It's very clear that the learners will be introduced to the topic of uh, climate change and thereafter impacts of climate change. And the third one is the mitigation and adaptation to climate change. These are the three uh, compulsory courses. The, as far as the optional courses are concerned, climate assessment tools, that is one optional course. The other one is climate change and society. So now, let us look at uh, each and every course uh, in a way that you can get to know what exactly is there in the uh, program, what exactly is there in the course, what you will be getting out of it and in what way, uh, you know, uh, it will be enticing that we will be discussing uh, right now. So the first important course, let us see one by one so that I will be tr trying to provide you with the broad contours of the program and also broad contours of the, the uh, courses also. So that you can know that how uh, it has been, uh, you know, uh, you will be learning uh, or you will be exposed to, you know, the, uh, you know, uh, the requirements, when I say requirements because not only the, it's basically what is required from this particular program is sensitization, what is required is the and kind of an attitudinal change and that will be possible only through climate literacy, climate literacy is extremely important. So first and foremost important course is the introduction to climate change and in this particular course we have uh, four blocks and uh, as I said, each and every course will have 16 units and uh, this particular course, if you see, it has been uh, um, divided into four blocks. There are four blocks are there. Block one, uh, block one deals with the, the basic uh, climate change aspect. When I say basic climate change aspect, uh, it's about the climate system, how the interaction that is taking place in the, uh, uh, the system, climate system, between the atmosphere, between that, uh, what do you call, uh, the hydrosphere, cryosphere, biosphere. So what kind of interaction that is taking place? If there is any interaction, what kind of output will be there? So this is basic, uh, you know, the understanding you need to un have on climate system. And that will be introduced in the, the block one, that is atmosphere and climate. When I talk about the interaction that is taking place in the climate system, mm, you know, the kind of a corollary, uh, you must know the feedback systems. There are a lot of climate feedbacks. See what, for example, the present average temperature is 15 degrees centigrade. How, you know, how it is 15 degrees centigrade? Why it is 15 degrees centigrade? Why not it is 18 degrees centigrade? So this is because of, you know, kind of an interaction that is taking place in the climate system. You know, the kind of relationship that is taking place in the climate system. And that is called feedback. It's a, essentially speaking, it's the most important thing. And we uh, human beings, our human activities are, you know, perturbing this uh, climate feedbacks. And that is causing a lot of harm to the climate system and hence the climate change. So this is about the first uh, block and wherein we will be discussing more about uh, the, you know, there are a lot of uh, natural mechanisms, natural causes of climate change also and that has taken place, that is in, indeed a uh, cause for uh, concern in the past, uh, you know, uh, 4,000, uh, 4.5 billion years, yes it is. But in the present uh, uh, context, in the, if you see in the last uh, two centuries or three centuries, the most important uh, 
being yeah social animals the human beings they are in a position to change the uh, you know every possible thing on the global landscape and that has indeed led to a lot of changes that we called as global change and within that global change one important change is global climate change so we'll be talking about the anthropogenic reasons Anthrop how human activities are responsible for causing climate change but once you understand the human activities what are the main important things we can uh, kind of a prioritize our actions for example if you are concentrating on the energy sector transportation sector because wherein you will be using more of fossil fuels and that lead to a lot of you know pumping of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere so in a way you wanted to bring in a change in the energy se sector yes you need, need to switch over from the fossil fuels to the renewable energy so this kind of thing we will be discussing later but before that we need to understand that how human beings human actions are causing change so that will be discussed in the block number one and the second one is a very interesting block again uh, it's about the you know uh, the climate in the past the when I say talk about the past climate, uh, definitely it is very important because we need to understand that yes, it is in the past uh, climate has changed. In that ca case, if it has changed, yes, it has been proved beyond doubt. So, what kind of uh, you know adaptation measures uh, uh, hum human humanity has taken in the past? Uh, that we need to take into account and that is the reason why uh, the, in the climate of the past is very important thing because once you understand once you decipher the past climate you will be in a position to understand better the present day climate and once you know these both that is the present day climate and the, the past climate through modeling through all kind of your um, the scientific knowledge uh, that uh, you know basically the computer modeling and everything you can uh, you know figure out what will happen down the century what will happen by 2050 or 2070 what will happen i'm just talking about the future climate because we need to understand about the future as well because not only the climate is changing the population is increasing and there are a lot of changes in the uh, you know the demands of the human beings yeah, starting from the food we, we eat the kind of uh, you know civilizational change the kind of you know uh, the standard of living and so on and so forth it is changing so in that circumstances what are the measures we need to take into account so future climate is very very important thing so in this particular block block number 2 which talks about the past climate present climate and future climate we'll be discussing about the paleoclimate you'll be discussing about the human footprints of um, you know you know that is most important thing human footprints i'm talking about the deforestation activity industrialization activity urbanization activity this is all called as human footprints and that's indeed in interesting so once you understand these things definitely through you know there are a lot of models are there you will be having a uh, through this particular block you'll be having uh, the learners will be provided with the bird's eye view of uh, the basic nuances of uh, uh, modeling so how uh, the climate scientists are in a position to uh, figure out or in other words to project what will happen uh, down the line. So that will be discussed in this particular block number two. Third is again an interesting um, uh, topic uh, that is about the, uh, the indicators. So we are, yes we are saying that climate is changing and what kind of indicators are there how can you feel it how can you judge it how can you you know categorically state it so that was possible through certain indicators indicators yes the most important the common metric that we have seen is the temperature temperature is a, more, a common metric that we are using in uh, last century and we can understand very well that if um, uh, climate is changing that we can easily figure out from this uh, change in the temperature next other a lot of other metrics are also there the second most important metric is the precipitation the change in you know uh, the the rainfall intensity the amount quantum everything is changing that you can see it for yourself so this is again an indicator of uh, changing climate so precipitation indicator is very important thing and when you see the precipitation or the temperature if it is changing it can have an impact on the livability it can have an impact on the organism's existence it can have an impact on the resilience of the ecosystem so many of the organisms will be you know driven to extinction possibly they they are threatened and that is again an indicator of for studying climate change so the last one is interesting again uh, because when i say mm, this kind of changes because climate is changing yes we are certain about it and along with that thing uh, this most important thing I, I, is uh, the climate variability you know the kind of uh, variations in the occurrence of drought flood the cloud burst you know uh, 
it's increasing day by day. It's increasing year after year. And that is indeed a component of climate change. So climate variability, uh, in other words, the extreme events, the weather events also is an indicator of changing climate. And this is again factored in this block number three climate change indicators. The last one is, uh, yes, we have talked about the science of climate change, we have talked about the indicators, we have talked about the past and the future climate. So what are the measures um, at the global level we are taking into account? Measures means um, the conventions, the protocols, the, the kind of, you know, obligations the nation have towards um, the future generation. Yes, on the climate front, what kind of measures we are taking into account. So in that, say, uh, in that regard, uh, the, the global initiatives. Uh, like United Nations Framework Con Convention on Climate Change, the Kyoto Protocol and uh, just a few minutes back I discussed about the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, even the Sustainable Development Goals that is again uh, gives us a pathway for uh, the humanity to how we will be proceeding uh, towards sustainable development. Uh, that is the best possible development we have right now. So the, um, that is also is very well uh, incorporated in this particular block that is Convention on Climate Change. Along with that, um, the global initiatives or international initiatives, we are, uh, I'll, you'll be exposed, the learners will be exposed to the, the kind of initiatives that we have uh, at country level, that nation level, what we have taken. There are a lot of programs the, the, we have uh, in the last decade, we have uh, went for a national action plan on climate change. And, uh, along, uh, you know, subsequently there are a lot of programs uh, we, the government of India has initiated. Those things will be discussed and it's very impo important for simple reason is that we need to understand that uh, the impacts fine. But the kind of measures, the programs, how efficient they are, that also has to be, you know, definitely de assessed because we are under obligation. When I say we are under obligation, yes, we are party to uh, the Paris Agreement, we are party to the Sustainable Development Goals, the global agenda. So in that way, when we are party to the uh, international treaty, we are bound to do certain uh, actions, a proactive action at the nation level, at the local level as well. So this is about the uh, first uh, course that it, uh, it is introduction to climate change. Next, we'll be talking about the impacts of climate change. Uh, when we talk about impacts of climate change, um, th this is uh, again a 16 unit uh, uh, course. So wherein we'll be discussing about the many, many, uh, you know, sectors. The first and foremost sector we can understand is uh, not only for our country, every, uh, elsewhere, uh, the first and foremost sector is the primary sector, wherein uh, we'll be looking at the climate change impact on agriculture, climate change impact on the animal husbandry activity, fisheries activity and you know livestock animal husbandry that is the thing. So uh, that is you know in the primary sector we will be looking at all the impacts see how climate is uh, affecting the change will have an impact on the food security that is if it is affecting the food production consequently it will be affecting your food security. National security at household level also it will be affecting. So that will be covered in this particular block that is block number one primary sector. The uh, next one is uh, the natural resources. When you talk about the natural resources, uh, soil is a very important resource. Um, you know, um, um, you, you, in fact, uh, you have energy resources, you have mountain ecosystem, it's a very natural, you know, nature. So that system, the nature, the resources also will be very well uh, affected because of uh, climate change, because the kind of use, because we need to switch over from the fossil fuels to the renewable resources. So the demand will be on the renewable resources. How we will be tapping the renewable resources? If you wanted to tap, definitely there is a demand for technology. If there is a demand for technology, where will be getting the fund? The, I'm talking about the finance, climate finance. So definitely there is a possible, you know, we know had that in the past, uh, the kind of change we have experienced is because of uh, the developmental activity, particularly the Western world. So the developed countries has contributed towards climate change. They are historically responsible for changing climate. So since they are historically responsible, they are bound to provide, you know, they are duty bound indeed uh, to provide the finance to provide the technology to the developing countries and that is very much part of uh, the Paris Agreement as well. So that is called as common but differentiated responsibilities. So the resources, the impacts of climate change on resources and on the natural ecosystem. When I say natural ecosystem, the soil is the most important e ecosystem because 
uh, yes, it is uh, the most important because it is providing the you know uh, bedrock for agriculture production. And uh, the second important uh, ecosystem, as far as the nature is concerned, uh, the mountain ecosystem. Uh, you know, the people living over there, they are dependent on the the fragile um, the, you know ecosystem, and that particular mountain ecosystem c can be severely affected because of climate change. So these all will be discussed uh, in this particular block. The last block in this particular course that is impacts of climate change you will be discussing uh, uh, you know on urban ecosystem, urban uh, areas are affected by cause of climate change and how they are also contributing indeed they are also contributing it. but at the same time if you look at it the the urban ecosystem that will be affected because the change in climate can affect an effect on the urban resources it can have an effect on the the water availability to the urban population the the building sector the u energy use i'm talking about the urban transportation and it can have an impact on the health also and not only the urban areas it can have an effect on the complete human health. So that is also again factored in, in this particular uh, block. The last one is that uh, the livelihood, you know, the livelihood, uh, climate change is going to affect your livelihood, whether you are in whichever sector you are, whether not only the primary sector, secondary sector, everywhere, because every sector is having a, you know, uh, the linkages, forward and backward linkages, I repeatedly say, say that particular thing, because it is so, you know, integrated. So these all will be covered in this particular course, impacts of climate change. So, wherein every uh, sector, 16 sectors have been covered. The next course is mitigation and adaptation uh, to climate change. So, not only uh, we need to understand the impacts, we need to uh, take the measures also. When I say measures, uh, we will be taking a mitigation. When I say mitigation measures, the measures which can curtail, contain the uh, greenhouse gas emission that is called mitigation. So not only mitigation is helpful, we need to look at the adaptation measures as well. So the both mitigation and adaptation strategies should go in hand in hand and that is the need of the R. So when is the need of the R because when you look at it every aspect of development, sustainable development, economic development, so we need to take into account both and our approach should be very integrative, uh, should be very resilient in nature. If it is to be resilient in nature, definitely both has to be taken into account uh, from the perspective of sustainable development. So climate resilience also is very much part of this uh, particular course. Uh, you will be, you know, you will be exposed to the basic, uh, you know, nuances of mitigation, what exactly you can think about it. So when you know the basic, you know, measures you can adopt so that the greenhouse gas emissions can be curtailed and you, in that sense, um, you know, you will be knowing the science of it. When I say science of it, there are a lot of measures are there. Each and every sector you can think about mitigation. Along with that thing, you, you know, one more important thing is that uh, there is definitely economic development is required. We cannot s stop it. And when I say economic development is required and we cannot stop it, uh, what I want to say is that definitely economic development should respect the environment and economic development should be resilient and that economic development should be, uh, you know, the benefits of it should uh, go to the future generation. So that is in, indeed the sustainable development. So that kind of intergenerational equity is very much required and that will be possible through an integrated approach which can dovetail mitigation and adaptation strategies. So in this uh, course, again we will be uh, we have taken into account the sector wise, agriculture sector, what kind of mitigation and adaptation we need to take into account, the forestry sector, the land, the, uh, the energy sector, the industrial sector, the transport systems, you know, we are thinking about a lot of uh, you know, changes. For example, a simple thing what you have seen, seeing for yourself uh, uh, the metro system or the CNG system is all a change, you know. So we now will look at the renewable things, so renewable change that you will be bringing in the transport system. So in that way what happened, every possible way you will be, all the measures you will be taking, you will be trying to minimize the carbon footprint from every sector possible. And that is very important thing. And next one is that uh, the, when I talk about adaptation, adaptation is more significant in human health aspect, human infrastructure, how your infrastructure, the public health, the, the you know, infrastructure is resilient, you know, public health is very important thing. So when I say public health, the, uh, the medical facilities, uh, the kind of the, uh, the, because when I say climate change is going to affect uh, 
the human health through many of the waterborne diseases, vector-borne diseases and there are many many. We will be discussing in uh, near future the what are the health aspects also we will be discussing in near future. But uh, at this juncture you need to understand that uh, yes human health is uh, severely affected because of climate change and we need to take the adaptation measures. What all those we will be discussing in detail in near future. And uh, the, the other one is uh, very important thing that is happening is the development in the urban sector, urban, urbanization, the population, urban population is increasing very faster. So, because that uh, will can have a stress on the urban ecosystem and uh, in that way well, you can have a think about the concept called the green building. When I say green building because the construction activity the energy consumption, energy use in the building sector, it is increasing and that is contributing to climate change. So, bring in a change and you, that change is called a green building as far as construction is concerned. So, and that is possible if it is going, you, if you go for green building, what kind of measures you will be taking into account at the, when you go for construction activity, what kind of, you know, uh, energy use things you will be going for it. So, in that way, in nutshell, so the carb, carbon footprint is minimized as far as the building sector is concerned, construction activity is concerned. So, not only that thing, we need to understand the, the wastage, you know, uh, waste uh, that generation, the waste is increasing, definitely the population is increasing, we are, uh, you know, 7.2 billion, by 2050 it will be crossing 10 billion, so definitely the waste generation is in a hu huge activity, yes in India that is a human activity, but waste management is equally important, because there is a kind of an uh, interrelationship between uh, waste management and um, climate change. So, these all will be discussed in uh, the third course mitigation and adaptation to climate change. So, these are the three compulsory courses. Now, we will go for the optional courses. There are two optional courses, the learners are free to choose either of them. The first uh, uh, optional course is climate change assessment tools. So, wherein interestingly we will be discussing about uh, the uh, vulnerability assessment, how, why people are vulnerable to climate change, what kind of uh, you know uh, society they have it, because there are a lot of parameters, a lot of drivers at the society you know, uh, the social uh, you know society that is making them vulnerable. It can be a demographic setting, it can be a educational background. Yes, education background is very important. When I say education background is important for that basic reason, we have a program on postgraduate cert um, certificate in climate change because education infrastructure, educational training can help a great way to mitigate and adapt to climate change. So, this vulnerability, what are the drivers? You know, uh, the, why the people, I mean, uh, for, for instance, the, the people, uh, um, silent population, people living in the, uh, you know, uh, Pacific Islands, island communities, dwellers, uh, the forest dwellers, think about the children, the women, the pregnant women, they all are vulnerable. Why they are vulnerable? So, what is that, that is making them vulnerable? So, these all we need to understand to assess the vulnerability. These are all the things we need to understand to assess the social vulnerability, not only the physical vulnerability, we need to understand the social vulnerability also. So, that will be very well factored in this particular um, course, vulnerability um, assessment. And a uh, very interesting point is that as far as vulnerability assessment is concerned, we will be discussing about the models. The particularly we are focused on the agriculture models, crop models, uh, simulation models. These models can help us, help us and help you to know uh, how the agriculture system is uh, acting towards the climate change, how can it can cope, whether it can cope or not and what are the measures we can take it so that it is resilient, the agriculture system is resilient. So, in a way it is a crop simulation model. So, that basic nuances, basic uh, principles, fundamentals of uh, uh, models that is uh, you know uh, covered in this particular course climate change assessment tools. Then next one is the techniques, when you talk about techniques, yes model is very important thing, uh, you need to understand that because when you talk about the techniques, mm, uh, remote sensing is a technique remote sensing GAs is a technique. So, wherein you can uh, using that technique or the tool you can know the impacts of climate change, you can know uh, you know how to take measures, what are the measures we can take it so that we can manage 
uh, reduce the disasters. So that is the thing also which we need to understand. So that is covered in this particular course, climate change assessment tools, wherein we will be talking about the vulnerability assessment, we will be talking about the, uh, the crop models, different models and remote sensing and GAs, how it is applied in the field of climate change. Now, what are the applications? What are the measures? You know, uh, a lot of things we can do it. So, basic things, the principles of remote sensing, GAS, the application, it's widely covered in this particular um, course. The last one is, uh, um, the, you know, uh, the learners also will be exposed to the life uh, cycle assessment tools also. How, because any product, if it is, uh, you know, causing a lot of harm to the environment, I'm talking about the, the greenhouse gas emissions and all. So, how to go about with the life cycle? assessment. So, these all will be covered in this um, course, climate change assessment tools. The next optional course is climate change and society. So, when you talk about climate change and society, uh, this is, uh, you know, in a way, uh, it is an uh, optional course, wherein how, in what way climate is going to affect the human society as whole. When I say human society, because you know, uh, there are certain people, you know, indigenous people, indigenous community, they are all severely will be affected, and their effect will be different from the uh, people in living in the urban areas or rural areas. So we need to understand the indigenous communities, they, you know, how they will be affected. So human society in every possible ways, every possible dimensions, is covered in this particular course. So indigenous community, indigenous knowledge is very important thing, and very important thing as far as this particular course is interesting indeed is about the uh, security aspect. When you talk about security, it is about the population security, it is about the human security, it is about the sovereign security, you know, uh, territorial security because the climate the change is not having any borders, you know. So, uh, it can have a drastic effect irrespective of the borders, it does not have any borders it, it means. So, territorial integrity can be affected because of climate change. Sovereign security is very important thing. So, these four important securities, human rights as well. So, all are covered in, de in detail in this uh, course climate change and society. As far as the dimensions, societal dimensions, economic dimensions are concerned, th there are a lot of movements that is taking place across the country. Uh, not only across the country, the global level, a lot of movements. And I think um, the young lady, the Thunberg, uh, she, Greta Thunberg, she, she was, you know, uh, somehow made a lot of changes, you know. Uh, the kind of attention she has drawn, uh, the global attention, media attention towards climate change is remarkable. So, this is an, a movement, this is a movement, this is about the social movement. So, the, uh, the social movement that is taking place, um, you know, across the, um, the you know, breadth and uh, length of the, the globe, if you see, everything is covered in this particular um, course, social movement, um, along with that thing, uh, you know, there is a dimension called the gender dimension, because gender dimension because when I say talk about gender, that is again uh, differentially impacted because of climate change. So that is also covered, the climate change and society, you know, uh, the climate change and gender. So what kind of gender mainstreaming policies is required? So that the, um, the women, they also can, you know, uh, contribute to the maximum possible uh, in the mitigation strategies also, in adaptation strategies also, because their role is very important in certain sectors. In all the sectors, but in certain sectors is very important thing. For instance, agriculture, their role is very important thing, because they contribute at, to a maximum level uh, at the, uh, towards the household food security. I just, I just gave an uh, example for it. So, so that is also covered in this particular block number three, which talks about the socio-economic dimensions of uh, this uh, climate change and society. The last one is um, at the global level, what are the measures we have taken? Yes, we have talked about, I just talked about the, the conventions that we have discussed in the first uh, course. In this course, we will be discussing more on the, uh, uh, you know, uh, sustainable, sustainable development goals. Because now, yes, uh, it's for five years back, um, it has, uh, what you call, came into existence, sustainable development goals, 17 goals. All 17 goals are very important thing as far as climate change is concerned. The foremost important goal that is a SDG 13, which directly focuses on climate change, every aspect of climate change that is also covered in this particular program. So this is all about uh, the program, Postgraduate Certificate in Climate Change. It's a very comprehensive program wherein you, you, have, um, you listen to me that every aspect of climate change in a, in a possible way, it comprehensively covered. And um, I think um, uh, what I would li like to say is that come forward, 
and enrolled for this particular program and definitely I will uh, we'll try our best to make you climate literate. Thank you.